As I sat with steam coming out of my ears in pure disgust watching the Cowboys fold against the Packers in the playoffs, my always curious six-year-old daughter walked in and bluntly asked, Daddy, why do the Cowboys always lose? She's only six. She doesn't know the half of it. We get cool national holidays every day. Yesterday was National Frozen Yogurt Day. Friday is National Pizza Day. But today is a day that really means something. No offense to frozen yogurt or pizza. Did you know in 1967, 20-year-old Catherine Switzer tried to run the Boston Marathon? That's it, just run it. But women weren't allowed to compete. A race official tried to forcibly remove her from the course. The NCAA didn't even sanction women's basketball, volleyball, or softball as sports until the 1981-82 school year. This year, you can watch all three national championships on national television. While oddly, there are currently no women in sports departments here in Austin, and there usually are, women have played a prominent role at all five stations over the years, and covering women's sports is a priority at all five, too. Here at CBS Austin, Allison Smith, Courtney Timmons, Cassie Gallo, and Sarah Merrifield shared the sports anchor desk just since I started here in 2007. I can't go without expressing my true admiration of so many women across our industry, and this list is certainly much longer than this, but to Layla Rahimi, Chris Budden, Julia Morales, Danny Wexelman, Leslie McCaslin, and Lauren Hippie. To that six pack of awesomeness, I say thank you. You've made me a better journalist just by watching you. Today's National Girls and Women in Sports Day is a beautiful thing, and it's important we celebrate it because women weren't always given a chance in sports at all. It's a great opportunity to honor the work women continue to do in breaking down barriers across the sports world, make them even better, and add even greater perspective. We will hopefully get to the point we don't need to do this because it's just the norm, but to all women who made sports a priority, especially my mom, thank you. It is simply wonderful to see women earn their equal opportunity and make their own dreams come true. They do that so that one day my daughters can play sports, work in sports, coach in sports, or just thoroughly enjoy watching sports, like the NFL playoffs, when their own kids can ask, Mommy, why do the Cowboys always lose? December 3rd, 2019 will long live in my mind as one of my favorite moments on TV. It's the night Lance Blanks hugged Andrew Jones following a Longhorns win because of the inspiration Jones was providing. It was also what we all wanted to do to AJ1 in that moment. And now we all just sit here wishing we could give Blanks another hug because of the inspiration he provided us. I walked out of a lunch Wednesday and checked my text messages to only then find out about Lance's death. And I just sat in my car staring at my phone in disbelief for like half an hour. And then I started to think of all the lives he touched. His family, his Longhorn family, his NBA family, his Longhorn Network family, me as a Texas basketball fan in the late 80s, and then me again as we cross paths here. As awful as it is, and as much as we all still wish Lance was here, it's also pure joy to read about the people's lives he made better and the stories people are telling about him. Go read some of the words about him. He was a light, he was an idol, he was selfless, he was wise, he was a superhero. The list is long. Lance Blank's legacy was about more than basketball, even if that was the outlet that allowed him to leave his mark. He was a good and kind man to all of us. Let this be another opportunity you have to tell those around you that you love them. Actually, don't just tell them, go hug them. The same way Lance hugged Andrew Jones that December night and the way we all wish we could still hug Lance. Last night, the Round Rock Express won their first game of the 2023 season, and I won too, because my wife and kids were there to witness it. For my kids, it was their first ever baseball game, and the happiest emotion I can report tonight is that both of my girls absolutely loved it. They loved the pizza, they loved the chicken fingers, the fries, they loved the cotton candy. They loved the bounce house, they loved to dance, and they loved to cheer when Round Rock scored. They loved the fireworks. Do they know what an out is? I mean, we're working on it. But for a first ever baseball game, it brought me so much joy to see their joy. I was a little anxious, quite honestly. Selfishly, I want my girls to love sports. Fine if they don't, just a selfish hope. But to me, last night was pure perfection because my girls were happy. And I hope baseball always makes them happy. All right, as you think back through the Texas quarterback battles of the last 25 years, Major and Chris, Chance and Vince, Colt and Jevin, Garrett and David and Case, Tyrone and Gerard, Tyrone and Shane, Shane and Sam, Casey and Hudson, none feel quite as intriguing as Quinn and Arch. Both QB1s earned the highest possible recruiting ranking in history, both would start for just about any program in the country, 
Both will get opportunities to start in the NFL. And yes, both are at Texas. Ewers hasn't officially announced his return, but either decision for him is risk reward. Go pro and he could tumble through a very talented quarterback class. Stay and possibly back up Arch next year because this is truly a program that Sark is building through competition and his competition is now truly stiff. With so much excitement around Arch, though, another possibility does exist that it seems many are not considering. Quinn returns for his junior year, takes another major step this offseason, and becomes the best quarterback in the country, wins a lot of games and a lot of awards, solidifies his first-round NFL draft status. As you are seeing with all the NFL early entries in this program, Texas is not short on development. And with Sark as the key developer at the position, why wouldn't all that happen? Quinn Ewer's future is extremely bright. Let's not lose sight of the forest for the trees. It just feels appropriate to do sports this way tonight. 13 years ago tonight, Bruce Bochy led the Giants to the World Series championship with a 3-1 <laughs> win over Texas in Arlington. The Crazy. Rangers fans had to watch that. The Rangers fans then had to suffer through 2011 and the Cardinals. But Bruce Bochy comes back, leads the Rangers tonight to a World Series championship. But the Rangers he, he, was on, he was on the bench for three years. Yeah. He was doing yeah, nothing didn't do for anything. three years. Yeah, it's, it's, it really is incredible. And he was getting the itch to come back. And he really wanted to. There you see the score. Texas beats Arizona 5 0 wow. to win their first World Series championship. Uh, no hit through six innings, they, which is just insane <laughs> in, in and of itself. They squeeze out a run to make it 1 0. They score four in the ninth to pull away. Uh, just an incredible. I, what I really wanted to do here was just give a little insight to, the, to why this means so much to so many people. I didn't know how I'd react if and when they ever won it. Yeah. And I just immediately like kind of broke down in happy tears. It, it's really bizarre. But. When I was a kid, my parents took me to Ranger games. They, they helped me fall in love with this franchise. Um, I went to tons of games as a kid at Arlington Stadium. Then, of course, they made the move to Globe Life Park and now Globe Life Field, whichever I always get those backwards. Um, but but it's, a, it's a family thing. And it, and it was that way for Astros fans back in 2017 that went through this. I've seen some of my friends on Twitter. I'm getting a million text messages. I've seen my friends on Twitter talk about their dad taking them to games when they were a kid and what it meant to them. For my mom and dad to take me to, a, to games as a kid and see this franchise do what it did is truly incredible. You go through the heartbreak of 2011 uh, yeah. and being one strike away on two different occasions and then you don't win it and you, you live with this for 12 years. It's actually kind of funny. Non-Cowboys championships in Dallas. 1987, the Dallas Sidekicks, if you want to call that one. But 12 <laughs> years later, it was the Dallas Stars in 1999. 12 years later, it was the Dallas Mavericks in 2011. And 12 years later, it's the Texas Rangers in 2023. The franchise's first uh, World Series championship. Now the city of Dallas has one in each sport. And it's just so special, I think, to so many people what it means. You saw Chris Young, the general manager tonight, grew up in Highland Park, became a, the general manager of this Rangers team. For him to get the title, for all these guys, Corey Seager named MVP. His second MVP joins a very short list oh, his of players who are MVPs yeah. with two different teams. But I don't know. I think in some ways I don't know how to put this into words. We see these, you know, the Rangers are on the field. Globe Life Field was packed tonight for a watch party. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if this tells you what this means to so many people, and I know some of you have experienced this, sometimes you go, it's just sports. Well, to so many families, it means so much more. And I'm grateful to my parents. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for letting me fall in love with this franchise. But more than anything, just a special night for the Texas Rangers as they win the franchise's first World Series championship with a 5-0 win over Arizona. And you waited so long for this. We all did as Rangers Everybody fans, did, right? yeah. And 2010-11 was such heartbreak, and yeah. we never thought we'd get back. It was the toughest thing that probably you have to go through as a sports fan. That Cardinals loss in Game 6 was the worst moment of every Rangers fan's <laughs> sports fandom. And now here they are with a World Series championship. All right, we gotta take a break. I'm gonna be telling stories all night, but stay with us. We're back after this.